Oh, double pop. One double for you, crack? one for me, one for Mr. Bumblebee. It was not simultaneous. No, I didn't want simultaneous. I did. I didn't want Californication. <laughs> <laughs> Takes two to tango. <laughs> All right. Did you ever well, watch that show? What? Californication. I watched the first... Uh, maybe two seasons. It was pretty good for a minute, and then it kind of lost me a little bit. Old oh, a- I'm, I'm Agent Mulder. Agent Mulder really. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Agent Mulder. <laughs> but it was pretty good for a minute. I, I, Did you see that show Hung? I didn't watch Hung. I got confused. They're both based on the same premise. You had to watch <laughs> Hung, huh? You just had to watch it. had to it. see what was going on there. So yeah, curious. I mean, <laughs> How Hung? <laughs> How huge is it? All right, this is not the Patreon show. We need to. <laughs> Tighten up. <laughs> tighten the ship up. <laughs> tighten up. Or tighten down. What are the Titans going with these days? Is it tighten up, tighten down? How about just don't get sacked? Yeah. Jeez. There's some kind of phrasing to if do. Mariota could just feel Mariota his bottom two fingers. All those sacks. That we he- should let them have seven offensive linemen. couple extra. Double team some people. Yeah. Ravens. Crazy. Ravens good? I think Ravens are pretty good. Ravens, they did good get beat D, by the Browns. Good D, above average offense or average offense? Above average offense. Flacco's elite. Flacco's not elite. <laughs> above, Flacco's elite again. Above average <laughs> offense. Depending on what throw it is. One of the best right. defenses in the league and just a good, good, solid operation over there. Never and never rebuilding. Always ship. reloading. Yeah. Yeah. They just keep it coming over there. And, and you know, obviously we're years and years removed from a championship and we're long gone from Ed Reed and, and Ray Lewis, but... They like you said, they just keep reloading and they've they're just always not, have a defense. Yeah. They're doing they're doing some solid things without like the top, those top draft picks to go you don't have to be at the bottom of the barrel to you know. Yeah. You never have to Making live through work. that. They never have to live through that. They're solid franchise. Good for the Ravens. Good for the Ravens. Well, we're here to talk about Qualcomm. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not. Uh we're gonna we're gonna touch on a little Tevin Coleman and um What's the other fellow's name? Ito Smith situation. Ito. Ito, Ito, Ito. Judge Ito. Judge Ito, Ito Smith. Tevin Coleman. The judge formerly known as Judge Ito. Well, people are freaking out. Freaking the F out about Tevin Coleman being not any good. Actually, I knew there was a problem because I got on the phone with Jay Wayne and he was a little concerned with Tevin Coleman. Right. And that's well, how I knew what I <laughs> needed to talk about. <laughs> Well, I had to talk about this week with that's, Tevin Coleman. That's when it got laid on my heart. Well, see, the problem is we I, I don't watch a ton of Falcons because usually it's it's a it's a local game and mm-hmm. we're over here at Casey's and we're eating up the direct TV package. And you, you don't really need to watch the Falcons. You kind of know what's going on there, right? Like Julio crushes. Calvin Ridley is good if you didn't know. You don't need to watch the games to even know that. And Devontae Freeman, Tevin Coleman, dual, dual threat uh, backfield. There. Offense. Normally good, right. normally good. Defense slayed with a bunch of bunch of injuries, marred by injuries, really all around for the Falcons organization, right? So you know, not watching a ton of those games, and I see that you know, Devontae but you did know you knew, you knew Freeman was hurt. Like I knew you, Freeman was hurt, okay. and I knew Tevin Coleman was and that's your assuming boy. that role. You just paid up for both of them in an auction dynasty startup, so you have been paying it. You've had to have paid attention to that spot at least if you're not well, watching no. the Falcons games. I know what's going on statistically. You're with starting. Their you've been starting Tevin Coleman. Don't be lying. You know you're no, starting. No, no, Tevin no. I have been. Yeah. No. So I know what's going on with the games, but I haven't put eyes on it. Got it. Right. So at least consistently, like week in, week out, like we right. do on. Now you ain't watching them like I've been watching Robert Woods. <laughs> I mean, you don't need to watch Robert Woods. You just know he's good and he's crushing. No, I tell you like I tell my bitches, don't watch me watch TV. <laughs> 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 Little Jewel Santana for you. Yeah. And anyway. The the lady, the lady L is for Jewels and the ladies love me. <laughs> so Freeman's hurt. You've been so, starting so Tevin Coleman. So I know Coleman. Freeman's hurt. And I have Tevin Coleman in multiple leagues. I, I, have, I, I, I had Tevin Coleman in, in a dynasty for years now. And then we did just do a, another startup and I... Wanted Devontae Freeman, and then Tevin Coleman came up, and I was like, "Well, I, need, I guess I need to get Tevin Coleman." And then it was an auction bid; I got bid up, and I was just, I just I kept increasing my bid to make sure I got him. I maybe paid a little bit too much for him, maybe not. Now it's it's working out, but it, it hasn't worked out like you think it would work out. You think that Devon, like the whole reason, the whole appeal of De, De Tevin Coleman, aside from getting you ten points, even if Devontae Freeman is there. Is the allure of him going somewhere next year and being a workhorse? Well, and or, and, and if Devonte Freeman is out, you see a large uptick in uh, usage, which and you saw that last scorage. year and the year and before. In the last two years, anytime Freeman's been out, Tevin Coleman's been RB one, 
and we had a really we had a serious podcast about Tevin Coleman being his own asset and the RB one uh, to follow a Freeman injury and. I right. mean, he's been his own asset anyway. If we're going right. to get into this game to game by game log here, it's not like he's been a no show, but he no. did, he hasn't done what you thought he was going to do without Freeman in there. Right, right. And I think that's and there's where, a pesky dude named Ito Smith right. taking touchdowns. I think that's where everyone is getting concerned. We are what because Kevin Coleman is doing. There's only two games where Devontae Freeman even logged snaps this year. Mm-hmm. And so that leaves four other games that Tevin Coleman should have his backfield to himself. Right. And he should be this RB1 that you think he's going to be without Devontae Freeman holding back. But it's really not happening, and it's basically staying the same right? without Freeman in the fold. And now cue Judge Ito Smith to the stand, please. Um, and he has been... And this segment here is in no way an indictment of us being upset with Ito Smith and not saying that Ito Smith is good, but like... In in my opinion, it's is not, not good. You're saying that is not good. Yeah, uh, I think Ido Smith is fine. I think he was a nice fourth round pick. If if you picked him up, I think he's paying dividends for you. If you're playing redraft, there's no reason to not have Ido Smith uh, rostered at this current sure. time. Sure, and you know, dynasty, somebody's probably got him. You missed the boat. Uh, somebody probably picked him up either early on or drafted him. Uh, but I just, I think Tevin. I think we're being. I don't want to say unfair, but like the splits basically staying the same with Ido Smith out there and Tevin Coleman. It's not like he's been bad and it's like, oh, well, Ido Smith is just clearly outplaying Tevin Coleman. Like, what's wrong with Tevin Coleman? How bad is this guy? Right. Like that's I don't in my opinion, not, that's not what's happening. They're just using Tevin Coleman like they would if Devontae Freeman was still playing exactly like they did week one, where it was kind of almost a 50 50 timeshare uh series by series depending on yeah, how week long one, that was series a, goes week one they alternated series with those two guys yeah the snaps were pretty equal for coleman and freeman it was 36 to 39 snaps uh, right. coleman being three less than freeman um and, and i'm with you it, it's not like Edo smith is just so good they can't keep him off the field and it's not like right that's kind of what i was getting play- at it's not like tevin coleman's playing bad either if you just if you didn't watch the games and you didn't see him taking handoffs and passes and looking really good each time he basically touches the ball. Tevin Coleman or Ito Tevin Smith. Coleman. Right. If you didn't see that and you didn't put eyes on how he actually looks, you, you'd be down on him like I was before I went and watched some more tape today because I was like, well, I haven't watched enough Falcons to actually be that upset. I need to put eyes on it. And I'm watching Tevin Coleman take handoffs. And, and he looks like Tevin passes. Coleman, right? And he looks like the old Tevin Coleman. Right. He looks fast. And he's not necessarily powerful, but he makes up for that because he gets five yards so dang quick. Right. Well, that's why we wanted to talk about this because just like Casey said, Jay Wayne called Casey worried about Tevin Coleman, and we you're seeing. Well, I didn't call him worried about Tevin Coleman. It came up. <laughs> right. All right. So Casey, maybe, well, I'm worried about Tevin Coleman. <laughs> <laughs> maybe talk me off the ledge, man. <laughs> talk me off the ledge. I'm gonna drop, drop him. him. <laughs> I'm dropping him. <laughs> no. It's so okay. So maybe it wasn't the phone call for Tevin yeah. Coleman, but it came up. No. In for ca- sure. And in, in Casey was like, "This is definitely something we gotta talk about." Because if if Jay Wayne's talking Some about new it, phone, who this? If if a <laughs> new <laughs> phone, who this? <laughs> What Jay Wayne is one of the biggest Tevin Coleman lovers. As we, I mean, if, if you don't like Tevin Coleman, then you just haven't been watching football for you the didn't last watch few him years. Play, yeah. So the thing about it is, is the Ito, like you said, there's people who are trying to talk about how Ito Smith is into Devontae Freeman role, and however, he's not into Devontae Freeman role. He's just he has a role on this offense, right? Like if you look at the the his pass protection has been awesome. I'm not saying that he has he hasn't like, earned. Some I was playing surprised time. how good his pass protection. I haven't, was. I haven't earned. I haven't, I'm not saying he didn't earn pl- playing time, but like he has, he's not Philip Lindsay, where he's right. been so dang good. Good point. The Broncos can't take him off the field. It's like Edo Smith isn't so good that, yeah. that Tevin Coleman's not doing this. So week two, week one was against Philly, and they split work him and Freeman, and it was against Philly week one championship banner best defensive front in the mm-hmm. league neither one of them did well although freeman could have had the touchdown and yep. on the first series blah 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 tevin coleman snuck one in there got a couple points but weeks two three and four tevin coleman gets 16 15 and 14 carries against the panthers no less who were missing thomas davis but they 16 carries for 100 yards four catches for 18 so you you know that's 16 20, 20 points right there. 21 points out of Tevin Coleman week two, which is exactly what you signed up for. Mm-hmm. Week three gets 15 carries against the Saints. 
Sam, somewhat underrated pass, rush defense, 33 yards, a couple catches, sneaks in there for a touchdown, gets you some points. RB2, week three, RB2, three catches, 26 yards, 50, 51 yards rushing. But in so in so now that we get into this little stretch of games here, Edo Smith sneaks a couple rushing, sneaks a touchdown away. So like in week four, 14 carries for 50 yards and three catches for 26 yards. That's only 10 points. But if it was his touchdown and not Edo Smith's, he's back into the low end one. Right. Robbie won with a 16er, right. you know, but Edo takes a, takes a run in. So like, and it's not necessarily, they're not goal line runs. They might be red zone attempts. But it's not on the goal line what Edo Smith's doing. He's breaking it off from like ten plus yards out and yeah. scoring because this offense is so lethal. And you're not think, you don't have to worry about Edo Smith. And so that's you what, give it to him and boom, boom, boom. You missed assignment and he's in the end zone. The and offense, then Tevin Coleman's day is down. The offense being lethal is what I was what I meant earlier when he's he's not playing a Devontae Freeman carry touch catch role. You've got a tight end that's coming to life, mm-hmm. coming to coming to mm-hmm. life over here. Hooper, you know, Hooper, so Hooper's coming to life. Sanu's still there, although he got banged up last week. Ridley's been a beast, and he got banged up last week. Julio's getting targets, you know. So like, not red zone targets. Well, but he's getting, you know, he's getting twelve <laughs> catches a game. Sure, right. Like and it's he's not. It's pretty this, sure he leagues the leading yardage again, right? Uh, yeah, he's got to be. Oh yeah. Well, t- you know, for the last two years, it was Julio and then the running backs for this game for this team, and now you put a first rounder into Ridley. Hooper's coming to life here as a young tight end who's, you know, the, all the story was, hey, how much time he spent with Matty Ice in the offseason. And he was, wor- just begged Matty Ice to spend more time to him. Mm-hmm. You know, hey, let me yeah. teach me this offense. Let, let me learn. move in with you this summer. We'll you, figure this out. Right. Let me learn where to be. What's your favorite color? Right. Let me get to know you. And <laughs> what, what are you feeling? What are they feeling? Matty right? Ice. Yeah. <laughs> so, and all that stuff's po- You're actually is warm. Good for Hooper. You know, yeah. it's working out for Hooper. And so it's, and, and so. I guess what I'm trying to say, bring to yes, I'm not worried about Tevin Coleman. Obviously, Devontae Freeman goes on IR, so that's a big bump for both of these running backs. But I'm not letting the I'm not taking Edo Smith's love to another level, and I'm not taking down my love for Tevin Coleman. That's right. you know just understand what's happening. Endo's with 16 carries, 15 carries, 14 carries weeks two through four. I know Edo Smith's a rookie, and he was but you know didn't even play week one. But his, you know, nine, two, seven were his carries. Mm-hmm. And then the next week, week five, obviously Devontae Freeman logged a couple snaps. He got three carries. But then last week, 11 carries, 22 yards. And one of them was a good looking run to the touch to, for a touchdown. So if you take away that one, you got 11 carries for about 11 yards. This man's not out there tearing and anything it, up. It, like it was, it was, not a, good look, it was a good looking run, I guess. That's what I'm saying. The, it was a decent the, run. It was bad assignment. They didn't right. hold their gap. So, I mean, if you get down to. What what's been going on through six games and through five games with Tevin Coleman and um, Ido Smith here, and just to kind of add to what you were saying, like obviously Tevin Coleman we know is probably going elsewhere next year, and we'll touch on that in a little bit of the well, val- theory of, about of that. how of how good that is moving forward. But Ido, Ido Smith is now going to be Tevin Coleman to Devontae Freeman uh, next year. So if you have Devontae Freeman, you should be looking to maybe buy into some Ido Smith or or maybe maybe not even because who knows we're, we're seeing a, a pretty even split here um but Ido Smith has been good so what we're looking at here with just starting with Tevin Coleman um he's got 11.8 attempts per game um he's got 0. 0.2 touchdowns per game if you want to average that out 43.3 yards per game and 3.7 yards um per attempt Hang on, you said Edo Smith got point two touchdowns. No, this is this is Tevin Coleman. Okay, I was about to say Edo Smith's got to be way higher. Now he's got a touchdown almost every game. So Tevin Coleman or uh, Edo Smith's averaging six point four attempts a game, three point two yards average, um, twenty point four yards per game, and point six touchdowns per game. That's rushing stats. And then if you want to go over to the passing stats, it's and total up the PPR. Uh, points there's 67.5 for tevin coleman to ito smith's 44.8 now there's a game difference between those two but what they've been doing um in their roles doesn't really to me equal out to a 20 some point difference right that just shows me that i'm still believing in what tevin coleman can do exactly um, tevin coleman with two 20 plus yard rushes on the season ito has zero and on, to, on top of that there's 11 red zone touches for tevin coleman and 16 for ito smith so ito smith's touching the ball more in the red zone 
Um, which is a little bit of, of a little a little weird, but also, I, but, you know, you can, hey, Tevin Coleman's doing some work between the 20s and getting them down there. You might pull them out. It's weird to see a, it's weird. It was weird to see a rookie get that much goal line work early or, or red zone work. Sure. And I, and and this time last year, I was like, hey, look at my boy Corey Clement being a rookie, being in around the red zone. So they must love him and trust him. So dynasty well, well, value moving forward long term. Sure. You got to This is great for a t- Ito Smith to be in there getting this run right and so those uh, those stats that were compiled were from the at FFD 260 on on uh, Twitter which is the the uh, dynasty, dynasty 260, 260 guys he, he I saw him tweet that out and I was doing a similar thing so I saw that and I was like I'll, I'll thank take, you take your word for I'll it take your word for it so uh, that was nice to see but again this is a team Obviously, Ito's out touching Tevin Coleman, and maybe they're seeing again. You've brought up multiple times about the missed assignments, Jay Wayne, of what teams are doing. They're not maybe as worried about Ito Smith as Tevin Coleman. This is the same team that is Julio has zero touchdowns, and his touches in the red zone are non existent. True. Like, I, I can understand from a point of saying, like, oh, Julio's going to get triple teamed in the red zone here and let's go away from him and we'll get Calvin Ridley on these easy scores. But I mean, if you're the Falcons, how do you not decide every one and four? We're throwing a lob to the corner to Julio Jones. Well, he still, Julio does, he still has four targets in the end zone. Right. It but just, it's, it still should be more incredibly more. Once you get into the red zone, you should be, I, I in my opinion, with a, a player of that stature, you should be going, he's an avatar. You should be going to him one in every four plays. You should be lobbing one to the corner to Julio. I don't care if he's triple covered or not. Agreed. Um, so just who know? I don't really know what the Falcons are doing. You're getting a lot of Ido Smith run, but but Tevin Coleman is still doing his thing. It's not like he's out being so outperformed by Ido Smith that you're like, oh well, what's going on with Tevin Coleman? Why does he suck all of a sudden? But he's, he's still getting, not he's still not even out touching him. He got right. one more carry than he did than than Tevin Coleman last week. But he's and but he's so, getting more red zone carries, which is that, those are valuable, very but, valuable. Sure, no doubt, no doubt. But I, I it's to when you. To me, it's it, the biggest thing here, though, is that, is everything we said, right? Tevin Coleman looks good when he touches the ball. Ito Smith isn't like Philip Lindsay. Got to get him on the field. Just awesome. He's solid, but not like amazing. the The alarming thing is like, why don't the Falcons want to feature Tevin well, Coleman more? Again, that's what I'm kind of getting back to. This is the same team that isn't targeting Julio Jones like I believe they should be targeting Julio Jones in the red zone so that I think that for whatever reason for whatever system that their offense is running and that they're getting behind like I just I don't they're obviously moving the ball I think they have a good quarterback I think they've had a decent system in place since Shanahan left and they've been figuring it all out but like to me it, not everything's making sense for, for yeah. what they're doing. Well, maybe, like maybe Tevin Coleman, in my opinion, should be more at a 70-30 right. kind of split right now than a 50-50. With, I can understand you like what you're seeing out of Ido Smith, and maybe you are getting advantages because people aren't worried about uh, Ido Smith in the backfield like they're a little bit more worried about Tevin Coleman hitting a home run. That That's, that's a real thing. That like, is a real thing. And, well, as far as real things go, Tevin Coleman is, you know, 6'2", 210, and a, and a blazer... And he can catch, and we've seen that through multiple years. And, and he's a good pass six, protector. Six, you one, said two, you've been ten. impressed with well, Ido Smith. Ido, yeah. yeah, but it's, Tevin Coleman's also been a pretty good Smith pass is, Absolutely. Ido Smith is 5'9", 195. Tevin Coleman's 6'1", 210. And, and again, I'm not taking – I don't. The, the purpose of this exercise was not to take anything away from Ido Smith. I'm. He's looked – He's well outperformed what I thought would be going on for him as a rookie. And the fact that he's even on the field this much says how much the Falcons do like him, which is another reason why, hey, maybe if you have Devontae Freeman, you're trying to pick up some Edo Smith. But right, like, but, but, there's but, no but, reason that Tevin Coleman shouldn't be getting at least, a, I think, should be more like a 70-30 or even a 65-35 kind of deal. I 100% agree. And I, the only and excuse not, that I can come up with for it is that Maybe they're trying to keep his production down to keep his his price tag cheaper next year. Maybe they want to try and re-sign him or something. I, I think I don't know I why. Think I think you're trying to see what you have with you. Hey, we know this guy's out the door. Yeah. Let's see what we have in this rookie that we just brought in here, who's electric and was very electric in college. And but he's not from a, as Nate Liss has illicitly said on YouTube multiple times. He's not from a Power Five conference. Ido Smith is trash. Right. Uh, this is a good player. Well, you can you can find a video from from Matt Kelly 
four months apart. One's telling you how overrated and terrible Edo Smith is, and the other one is how he's going to crush expectations in the NFL. So I don't know what you're getting over there well, and, and, from and month to I month. Didn't mean but to, I wasn't poking Nate. I like everything Nate List ever did. I thought he was the best part of that duo. <laughs> and he, he's got a lot of things right. So uh, Yeah, no, I like I like it too. It's the Just for me to end up here... I I I'd like I've, I don't mind some of the conspiracy stuff right there out of Jay Wayne and I I oh, think you love a good conspiracy I love a good conspiracy but and I, and I really like what Casey said there but it's also like the Falcons they've they're 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 trying to hang on here but their season went down the toilet in the first two games losing their best defensive players right and, and, then, and then you lose one, you lose your franchise running back one point that we haven't even brought up in all of this offensive line is yeah. the offensive That's, line has so been absolutely atrocious you, decimated you, by injuries and there's a reason that these maybe these yards per carry aren't quite as high as not only do you have a, an atrocious defense because of the key injuries some cluster injuries not only did you lose all your safeties at one time and your best linebacker and within two weeks, not only do you have bad li- uh, uh, offensive line, you add all those up and you're in shootouts and you got one of the worst defenses in the league and everybody's scoring points against you. So you're going down the field and your quarterback is smart enough to know to where to go with the ball. And there is not, it's just been a different offense this year. And it's probably not even, so, it's definitely not something they planned on. They didn't plan well, on yeah. coming in here and having a bad offensive line. And they didn't plan on coming Certainly here and have all these injuries. Didn't and they come probably in here and have a bad defense. This is a defensive coach that everyone was really excited right. in the direction that this defense oh, was heading. The last two years, their defense has come on so strong throughout the year and built on itself right. and they've had some really solid really smart draft picks and then they, everybody get in their best you know neil's a stud and sure they, they're just they're two defensive they're two best two different defensive players got hurt and i, I mean i like the corner offered he's really fast and he glues up to some people he gets burnt sometimes but they got you know they got mm-hmm. they got really beat up and so it's just a it's a crazy six game sample right here out of the falcons that we're looking at and so right now like i i wouldn't go out and I don't know what to call an overpay for Edo Smith is right this second, but I still think that Tevin Coleman is a better running back. And I oh. think I think that I, mean, I, I think that yeah, the Falcons not. think that. I don't mind that the Falcons hey I, I don't think it's I still think it's a little too early in the year for them to be like, Well, let's just run Edo all over the place and see what we got. But and maybe I, they're trying I to think, keep Tevin Coleman healthy because they already have a banged up freeman sure so it's a long season well but if they don't start winning in a hurry it's gonna be over i mean because that's they, true but yeah, it's a long uh, season and it is a long season but they better they gotta do something quick but i it is a tip of the cap for ito's pass protection and his ability to understand what the team wants him to do enough to be in in the red zone for a rookie running back to be playing in the red zone for me that's a big deal i just i, I haven't i just all of the hoopla right now about the falcon and we've seen it we got we got patreon questions on it yep and people asking about ito and at, what do i do with coleman do i get rid of coleman what do you know? i do with freeman what, right right exactly freaking and we, out and about we, freeman we should trans we should we should get into freeman after this po- like the We're gonna future, get into freeman what do you do the, with him patreon what do you do without that? him okay so that's We're a specific question the, the freeman for the patreon i guess but. i i just figure i just figure as the, as this season plays itself out i think tevin coleman is the obvious guy you won't start in your lineup every week if you need to if you need to you know if you're if you're decimated i got one league where i'd love to have had ito smith's touchdowns in my rb2 spot the last right. couple of weeks um well, but i think the bottom line for me here is to don't don't be down on tevin coleman just because you haven't seen him produce rb1 numbers when maybe he should have been well, you're not happy about it but you're, you, not, you're not happy about it but you, don't 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 freak out too much like i kind of wanted to do and i think all of this just creates a buying opportunity right. for tevin coleman i agree with that right? so there's plenty of players right now in the league that we liked or we like their skill set we still like them and the usage is just not right. Like the, the the usage for Tevin Coleman right now is just not right. He's I don't know what the actual average points per game is somewhere in the 11 range, 10 range. Um, but if, if this guy was just getting. Instead of 50 50, getting a, a little bit more of the lion's share of the carries, it'd probably be closer to a 15, 16 point a game kind of deal. 11.2. And, and that's what you're looking for out of these type of players like Tevin Coleman's and we talked about Alex Collins in the last show and your Kenyon Drake's and even Jordan Howard right now like these players if you went through and evaluated these players as being good players and players that you think are are 
really talented players. Like, there's no reason to be down on them. The usage right now is what's getting you down, and, and it's probably not going to stay that way. And now maybe Jordan Howard is locked into you know, being kind of relegated to whatever that game plan is week in, week out uh, on a team that's going to be working up some crazy schemes. But Tevin Coleman's going to get out of there in a season. And if he could just, again, shift that and still usage, be starter worthy for you in the process, right, well, like, that's he's still been an RB2. Like, he's still been very, very not, startable at his 11 points a game. You're not upset flexing that or RB2 in that. And, and making sure you get those points. And we said it last week when we were setting lineups for people saying just take, take Tevin Coleman and points. take your 10 points. And he got you 10 plus again. This is it's what he does. But if you could just see the usage switch over a little bit heavier to favor him. So he was more like a 65, yeah. 35 kind of guy I don't, or 70, 30, which is where I think he should be. Or even 80, 20. I think he could be that kind of a guy. He's and, been and then there's potential for 15 and then that 22, 23 point a game. And right now, I think you hit it on the head. This is a great buying window for a Tevin Coleman who is out of there next year. And it's an easy circle and dot to connect is is the 49ers and Shanahan was his guy. That's who he wanted. They're still looking for a running back. Brita, they like Brita. I like everything I've seen out of Brita, but I think the fact of the matter is, is the Niners want somebody else who can be their guy who yeah. they, they feel really good about. And just to, again, to go along with the Jordan Howards, if you believe in what Jordan Howard has to do, like he just hasn't, Jordan Howard hasn't been scoring touchdowns. Like Jordan Howard could have easily had a touchdown this past week and nobody be freaking out about right. it. Right. He's the guy that needs, he should be getting more than four. He should be more closer to 20 carries a game kind of guy catching a couple of balls. But now you've seen his usage go from being on the field 75% of the time to this week being on the field like 52% of the time. Yeah. So there's nothing you can re- like Tevin Coleman. I, I, no, there You get no argument from me that I've seen the Bears offense operating better and more efficiently with Tevin Coleman out, or not Tevin Coleman, uh, Tariq, Tariq Cohen, Cohen out there. And and Howard still has a role, still had 70 yards this week. If he has a touchdown and a couple of catches, nobody's upset about what Jordan Howard had to yeah, do. Yeah, first couple weeks he was catching balls. Right, exactly. And then you got Kenyon Drake out here who is being miss is being well underused, but every time he gets touches, his average is way up there. He's scoring points. He's getting touchdowns. There's no reason that te- that a guy like Kenyon Drake shouldn't be touching the ball for them for the Dolphins, who he's got. A, he's one of their best talented players out there. Not to take anything away from Frank Gore. If you want to give Frank Gore the ball 10, 12 times, that's fine. But Kenyon Drake, should, you should still be finding a way to get him the ball 12 to 15 times a game. And when he does do that, he's been really good. Alex Collins being underused, but he's every time he touches the ball, he looks really good. So if all these players, if you were into them before this season... Right now is a chance to go get those guys, and if, if you're or if, not sell too low, or or definitely don't Do sell not, too low. Yeah. Like if you're title chasing, I can understand maybe not necessarily going after those guys because right. you don't want to spend your assets on a player that you're probably looking for next oh, year. That was very well said. But if you're not title chasing and you maybe you're in the middle of the pack or at the end of the pack, these are all pieces that I would be looking to to go collect. Like don't just if you had a good evaluation on a guy and he's still performing well when you see him get his chances. There's no reason to be upset with that. Like, go get this guy, and, and you're, you're going to win some, and you're going to lose some. Maybe he goes somewhere else and, and keeps the same amount of usage that he's getting, but there's a chance that Tevin Coleman goes somewhere else and gets a huge amount of usage. There's a chance that uh, Alex Collins goes somewhere else and is more on the out of the 50-50 split, much like Tevin Coleman is, is more on the 70% of thing. because I think Alex Collins is way too elusive and good of a player to be at a 50-50 split with not that there's anything wrong with Javorius Allen, but I think Buck Allen, I think Collins is a better player. There's no reason that Drake shouldn't be getting the touch. Like these are all good players that that are effective with their touches when they're getting their touches and that you shouldn't, everyone wants to freak out because it's been not so great. And I mean, Alex Collins has been kind of like Tevin Coleman. Really? He's scored you over 10 points every yeah. game yeah. and you're just upset because you picked him in the fifth round and you were expecting a little more because exactly. he earned this crazy job uh, but I I'm still have the utmost confidence in all of those guys well, moving the key, forward. The key word there uh, that was all all fire takes there all the key word there is usage. It's <sighs> usage. Usage with all those like I, th- I completely agree first of all 
Kenyon Drake's a huge buy low for me right now. And I, I did say I was well said about title chasing. Even if you are title chasing and you can pick up Ke- Kenyon Drake cheap if enough. If you can afford to, if you can to, afford to move some th- stuff around. Who do some people and, yeah, and grab can, that other piece and further the pull, rich get richer. Pull the, Exactly. You can look like a genius this time next year. Pull the wool over somebody's head and grab Kenyon Drake for cheap. I recommend doing that. Funny thing about George Washington. <laughs> we're made of wool. <laughs> It's so funny. So, but Martha John, but those Washington are, was a hip that RB two lady that RB two <laughs> starter stuff. It's it's hinges on whether or not it looks like a good play on just one fluky touchdown. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like Jordan Jordan um, Howard touchdown or no touchdown is a big deal. And obviously, right now, like you said, Tariq Cohen looks so good in that Chicago offense. Jordan Howard's in trouble for your starting lineup right now. Mm-hmm. It's just trouble for your starting lineup right now. Creates a good nice buy low for him. On that, in that team, that system, like you said, you can't figure. You, you're not going. You're going to drive yourself nuts, being like, "Well, when, when can I start when's the him? Week that he's going to get. When's the when's the week that he's going to be controlling? Right. When are they, but you don't know when he's going to get the two touchdowns, and you don't know when he's not, and it's just going to get seventy yards, and it's going to be a nice rush. Those seventy yards going to help the team win, but it's not about your fantasy team. Mm-hmm. So that seven points he might on look your good bench, getting those seventy yards. It, yeah, exactly. And exactly. He normally he like does. A, he might look like a really good running back, but doing that, it's not going to be good. Like the Tevin Coleman, he's been to RB two for three, four weeks in a row, a decent one. But and then when he gets the touchdown, he gets twenty points. When he doesn't, he gets twelve or thirteen. It you know it's in yeah. it's there. It's just Edo Smith snuck him out. And the usage for Kenyon Drake is ridiculous. It's, just, it's ridiculous for the Dolphins coaches to be doing that. I see the Bears. I see the opening up of the offense. I see the spread them out. I see what you're doing with mm-hmm. Tariq Cohen. I see what you're doing with all these wide receivers and tight ends and moving them all around. And you may and you. I see your rookie quarterback come. Your second year quarterback. I see him coming to life. I get the Jordan Howard thing because the Bears have other options. Mm-hmm. I don't really understand the, the no, Kenyon I don't Drake thing. The Dolphins thing. And and and. It's there already. You see, it's there for Tevin Coleman. It's just. Hasn't. I also don't really understand the Collins thing too too much, but he really hasn't been as bad as everyone's really. Well, the it out the Ravens have been winning. Sure. That's my thing. Like, if, sure, it was and okay. The Dolphins really have been when, winning. Yeah, for four the as well. Two, they did been, win in weird ways. But they got when they the were. Fate th- was on their side. When the week. Dolphins were three and zero, oh, and me and Ke- me and Casey were having this conversation, I was like, "Well, whatever. They're three and zero. Oh, I'll talk. I'm not worried. You know, I hate that we got Kevin. We got Kenyon Drake on that UDPL. You know, we got in a, uh, in a league. We went. We've, it's just. Kenyon Drake's our boy. Kenyon Drake's our boy, and it's like, well, the Dolphins are three and zero. Getting, I can't worry about that. They're three and zero. I hate it. I hate it. Man, and then he they, wasn't terrible. And then they get shellacked. Those games either. They get killed. No right. Getting you some RB two numbers, but not right. getting you what he was down the stretch last but year. When you, you've when seen he gets him be awesome. Points. Right. You see, why can't he catch seven balls a game? Because it would make your offense better. Go ahead and do it. And it's just you see, but they were winning, and then they get killed for two weeks. And then last week, somehow they go back and forth with the Bears. Just ridiculous well, game. I, I agree with everything you guys have said about Kenyon Drake and being mad about the usage and how good he looks. But God damn, can we pour out one for my homie Frank Gore, who was just balling out there? Yeah, like yeah, right. And, I, uh, there was and then they won that game. Gore. So it's like, well, what are you know? Right. They're, they're I'm doing not upset right. with you if you want to give the ball to Frank Gore eight to. to 11, 12 times a game. I have no problem with that, but I just don't see any reason why you're not figuring out how to get Kenyon Drake, who is a very electric player. He is, but you can see sometimes he presses and he tries to to, to extend a play that he shouldn't and, he, and, and break something outside and he should be getting upfield. And you, sure. And, and, and Adam Gase has expressed that uh, concern with, you know, with Frank Gore, we got second and six, you know. I like second and six. Uh, yeah, but with Kenyon, yeah. it's not – he hasn't – he needs to, he needs to learn. Do I still have that? Frank, I don't think I have that sound clip still. Adam Gase needs to be a, a coordinator. Uh, he definitely has coordinator face. I, what was his deal? Why was he so angry in that press conference? Coordinator like, why face. are you asking me about my quarterback? Like, Bo, we're the media, and your quarterback's not playing. I think we're allowed to ask about it. And he was just like, he gave him the old it. cocaine eyes, just like, why are you? I'm not going to answer this question anymore. Yeah, this is long nights, long, yeah. long nights in Miami. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it's turned to mornings. Miami. Yeah, long nights. Oh. All right. Well, what do you guys think? Better wrap this thing up. I, th- I think we. So we're going to take the we're going to take the Devonte Freeman talk to the Patreon side of things. Yeah, there was a question asked on Patreon about specifically Devonte Freeman. Everybody's freaking out about Devonte Freeman. We don't. Uh, we, and Jordan Howard. We can we'll get into Freeman right here. We're in, we're all we're knee deep in the Falcons. <sighs> Let's do it. We, we I can think get this it. is called a tease. You gonna take a break? Tease? Let's take a break. We'll talk about. Let's take a break. We'll talk about it. We'll come right back. All right. We'll be back long before Julio Jones ever scores a, a touchdown. <laughs> <laughs>